Hi, and as always, thanks for stopping by. Today I get to show you how to use one of my absolute favorite tools in the Eclipse building framework, and that is the Window Builder. It allows us to create um, really nice GUIs or graphical user interfaces with a lot less headache than trying to code it manually. And so I'm just going to jump in and show you how to do it. As opposed to NetBeans, which it comes in, um, NetBeans comes with a Windows Builder. Eclipse, you have to install it. And there's a number of reasons for that, including that there are a number of different window builders you can use. Um, but today, it's, it's really not a hard thing to do, and today I'm just going to show you one of the more basic ones, I think. So we're going to come up here to help. We're going to go install new software. And so this window pops up. And so um, all we need to do is copy and paste this address. Now, I will put this address for you in this video on YouTube in the comments section, or not the comments section, excuse me, the description section. Um, but I still have faith in your ability to Google Eclipse Window Builder and find it yourself. But um, so we're going to, however you get it, we're going to copy that link, put it here, and then hit enter. Now you can see um, these options pop up. And I'm just going to install all of them. And you know, I already have these installed, so I probably won't, won't walk through the whole entire um, process with you. But this is a fairly straightforward, um, straight, straightforward process. You just hit next a few times. Um, it looks like I'm maybe not up to date, so that could cause some problems. But we'll see. So go ahead if you're installing this. Go and click next, next. I agree or I accept, and then you have to restart Eclipse. Um, but once you're done, then you're good to go. So I'm going to cancel out of there. We're going to come over here to my Java project. This is nothing we haven't seen before. It's the very exact same Java project we've used in previous tutorials. So we're going to right click here on our package, go to New, go all the way down here to Other. Um, you're going to have to, you might have a lot of things here, maybe you don't, I do. You're going to find the Window Builder folder. Um, we're going to expand it. And inside that, hopefully, there's a swing designer. Um, I can't recall if this is the exact the exact thing I installed the first go around, but I believe you should have a swing designer there. Um, we'll go and click JFrame to keep things simple. I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to call this my my calc. It's going to create the Java class for us. So we're just going to go ahead and click Finish. Now we can see that it's already added the code, the basic stuff that we want. So that's works in our favor. Um, it is a little messy and I don't I wouldn't recommend trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, it's nothing I worry too much about. So we come down here and we can see the source tab is highlighted. But let's go over to the design tab. Now it might take a little while to load the first time. Um, I'm not really sure why it is. It just needs to think about it. Um, and for our GUI today we're gonna make a watered down calculator. So we're gonna take two numbers from the user and then um, add them together and give the answer. So we can see this is our layout here. And again, I apologize for having a small screen. It might be a little hard to see what's going on, but I think you can follow me. Um, here we have our, our blank slate. This is what our frame, our JFrame. Next to it, we have all the options that we can use to decorate our JFrame or you know add what we need to. And then to the left, we have a structure, which the structure part is really handy in keeping track of all our components, because if you've ever worked with GUIs, you know that it gets really hairy really quickly. And then down here, we have a Properties tab, which I will talk a little bit about shortly. So let's go ahead and start. I like to start with the layout. Now, I believe in class, we've used um, the border layout, which uses components such as north, south, east, west, and center. I I think I'll go with the um, grid bag. So you notice when we hover over these, it tells us and gives us a description of what it is. So I'm going to click on this. Come over here, you see, you see it turns green. I'm going to go ahead and click again. Now it looks like nothing happened, but that's because this is a layout, remember, so we don't really expect to see anything until we add a component. So let's start with the text field, which is going to take in input from the user. We're going to come over, and you can see it's created this beautiful grid for us. Well, that's handy. So let's go ahead and um, put our text field here. And I'm going to say, give it a number. All right, and it left justified it. Now if we come over here, we can see these handy little lines. So if I'm going to click on the ones pointing side to side, it, it filled it. So it used all the possible space pop, um, to make it large. 
I think I just want mine to be the left, so I click left. And you can kind of see that border right there, so that made our text field a little bit slower. Now, the other thing I like about Eclipse over NetBeans is it does a much better job about naming these variables on um, this text field. Instead of just going JLabel1, JLabel2, like NetBeans does, um, it does give it a number. But I think I'm still going to make it um, make it something that's a little easier for me to work with. Because remember, when we're working with these codes, we're going to have to be changing a lot of things. So we're going to right-click on it, go all the way down to the bottom. And I think I'm going to change this name to given1 underscore field, because I want some way to still identify what type of uh, variable this is. And uh, that's the other thing I'd recommend is using consistent um, consistent naming conventions. So let's go ahead and add a second one. We're going to come down here. I'm going to add it straight below there. Let's say give a number. Enter. And again, I'm going to pull it to the left. All right, so now we have two text fields where the user can enter things. In fact, let's go ahead and um, hit play, or, or run, excuse me, the run button that looks like it. Go ahead and click OK. So you can see, we have our two ch our text fields. How exciting for us. OK, we can change the text, do whatever we want. All right, so, so far so good. Now let's add a button so the user can click when they're ready for it to return an answer. So come down here to our components. You see there's a J button there. And add it straight below here. So call it add. And I think I'll just leave it as it named over here, BTN add. It's not terrible. Um, and I think let's go ahead and fill the whole thing. Just because it's a button. Let's make it big. So again, let's hit play. And now we have our button. Now, the last thing we want to do is show the user what the sum is. So, let's go to our J label, put it here, and we're going to call it total. Now, uh, total, eh, doesn't look very exciting. Let's go and talk about our properties panel now, where we do some more exciting things, visually at least. We um, let's start by changing the font. So we have the font option here, these three buttons, be three dots beside it. I'm going to make it bold italic. Uh, actually, let's just leave it bold and make it big. Maybe 30, because why not? Okay, that was looking a little more exciting. Now let's change the color. You can see we have lots of different color palettes to choose from. Um, I think I'm just going to choose this green, because I like green. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this, see what we got. Cool. A very simple little GUI. It doesn't do anything yet because we haven't touched the code. Now this is the part where the code comes in. The main thing that we're concerned about is the add button. Because once that's clicked, we want to get the numbers from these two text fields and sum them together and then change this total. So we're going to come up here, we're going to right click, come down to... Um, Add Event Handler. Now, I'm coming off the side of the screen, so um, what I'm actually going to do is come over here to our components, which works exactly the same if we click here as if we click over here. Come to our button, right click. We're going to come down to Add Event Handler, Mouse, and I'm going to say Mouse Clicked. So whenever a mouse is clicked, it's going to do what we tell it to. Now, we can see it automatically jumped over to the source code for us. So that was pretty handy. All right, so now this is where the coding part comes in. So like I said, we want to, when this button is clicked, we want to get the numbers from the user, assuming they put in proper integers. And you can use doubles or whatever you want, but for this example, let's keep it simple at integers. So we're gonna go int given one, or whatever you name your variable, is going to be equal to, you remember we named our label given one underscore field, excuse me, it was a field, not a label, dot get text. Now right away we can see that this is going to cause some problems. I'm going to get you to think about to think about it. Why is this going to cause problems? And pause the video if you want, but let's go ahead and, and um, continue. We're going to hover over this so we can see that it's a string. We're trying to um, convert a string into an integer. 
And that's just the price of working with the Java Swing. Everything you do is going to be strings and need to be strings. You're either given strings or you need to change to strings. So this is pretty easy to fix. We're just going to go integer. The word spelled out with a capital I because it is the class. We're going to go dot parse. One of the things that pops up is a parse int. And we want to parse the string into an integer. So we're going to simply wrap this around our get text. All right, so that got rid of those angry red lines. Let's go ahead and copy this, paste this, and change this to given two, given two. And then, um, look, see, this is angry letters. So I'm guessing that I forgot to rename this variable. So um, let's go ahead and save and then switch back over to our design. Again, simply by coming down to the right of the source button, we're going to hit the design. And it looks like I got a exception, which is unfortunate because I believe this happens because it was I wasn't updated correctly. So let's go back to our source and um, forgive me for um, doing this in a kind of a hacky way, but we will, um, you'll just have to bear with me while I struggle a little bit harder than hopefully you will have to. So uh, we have this JTEX field, and up here we could see that um, we named JTEX field given one underscore field. So that's what we should have named this one as well. However, uh, it, didn't, it didn't work out that way, so we'll just copy that. Come down here and change this back to what Eclipse originally tried to name it. When it's save, and lastly our answer is going to be equal to given one plus given two. All right, so we've, we've gotten the input, we've added it, now we need to return it to the user. So we're going to do that by the label, which again, I suspect I did not rename. So let's come down here, and it's called label total. And I suspect, again, because of placement, it might not know where this is, because we define it after after we've um, added this, this function. So we can either move this down or that up. So let's go ahead and move this down. All right, so now I have this tool label dot set text. And it's expecting a string, and what we want is answer, which is an integer. So again, we're getting this error. And again, this is really not difficult. Before, we're just going to go integer dot to string, and then answer. All right, so I'm going to save that. Oops, we should probably also add this down there to the bottom because we didn't move it correctly. Let's see, and we'll try adding it below there. See how many angry like, lines we can get. Okay. So again, um, I think because my version is out of date, this is probably where I'm running into these issues. I'll try to update it and create a new video a little later, but for now, I hope you can still get started and bear with me as this works out. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so let's test this out with 8 and 3. Hit add, and it changed our total answer. So there we go. Looks pretty good. Felt like what we expected it to do, right? Okay, so I hope you found this tutorial useful. As always, please feel free to leave comments, suggestions, or concerns in the comment section below this video on YouTube. Otherwise, you can go to my website um, where you can leave comments as well as leave requests for future tutorials or um, topics that you would like to see covered. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you next time.